the Adidas SL20 and the Under Armour Flow Velocity Wind. Two shoes at opposite ends of the pricing spectrum and shoes whose brands are each using pricing to try and attract runners back to their brands. But which of these shoes is the better running shoe? It's time to put them to the test. Ten point four six miles, eight minutes, thirty seconds per mile, one hundred and forty six beats per minute today on average. Taking the Under Armour Flow Velocity Wind out for a medium run that was mostly easy, but did have a set of strides in there, so I get a little bit of variety of the pace. A perfect way of testing this shoe against the Adidas SL Twenty Version Two, where I ran the exact same workout the day before. Now, before I give you my thoughts on which of these two shoes is the better running shoe, I do wanna go over some disclosures. I bought both of these shoes myself. No one sent them to me or no one's paying me to make this video. And no one's gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with the disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Adidas SL20 and the Under Armour Flow Velocity Wind. First, let's take a look at some specs. We'll start with the Adidas SL20. With the SL20, we've got 21.5 millimeters of stack height and a 9.5 millimeter drop, which is kind of a weird amount of drop to have, but it leaves us with 12 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot, which I sometimes when I look at this shoe, I find it hard to believe because it just looks and it also feels like there's more than just 12 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot. The foam that we have in here is all light strike foam. There's nothing else in here. There's no torsion bar, stabilizers, LEP system, nothing like that. We've seen from Adidas and other shoes. It's just pure light strike. On the outsole, we've got super grippy continental rubber, that co-branded rubber, which we've seen in a lot of Adidas shoes and gives us a lot of faith in the grippiness that this shoe is going to have. And in practice, that continental co-branding definitely delivers. Delivers. Up top, there is a strong but breathable mesh with some underlays involved in here, giving a little bit more structure into the toe box. A lacing system in the midfoot that reminds me a little bit of Flywire, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Uh, a tongue that looks like it's pulled straight off of an Adidas soccer cleat and then wrapping around in the heel cup. There are little fins that protrude up and hug each side of your Achilles. There's a decent amount of structure back in here and a very light amount of padding. Overall, this entire package comes in at a weight of 8.8 .8 ounces. For the Under Armour Flow Velocity Wind, we have Flow Midsole Foam, which is new for 2021, at least in running shoes. Under Armour's been using it in some of their basketball shoes for, I believe, a couple of years. This is the first shoe where we get to see it in a running application. What's unique about it is that doesn't require any outsole rubber at all. It looks like there's two layers of midsole foam here, but my understanding is it's just kind of one big piece with a colored part that's sitting a little bit on top. On the upper, we have Under Armour's Warp upper material, which kind of looks like a fancy burlap sack to me. It's very breathable, but it's also very strong and lightweight. As far as the lacing system goes, it's pretty straightforward, nothing too fancy with it. A lightly padded tongue, which I never really like to have too much padding in the tongue, so I like what's going on in here. And an ample amount of padding in the back of the heel. The heel cup is pretty flexible, similar to what's in the SL20, but I would say this one is just a little bit more, not flimsy, but I'd say less rigid. The entire weight of this shoe comes in and a slightly lighter weight of 8.5 ounces. So what is it like to run in each of these shoes? Now, I'd say that for these shoes, they're daily trainers, so they're gonna be suitable for the vast majority of the running that you have over the course of your week. And I'd say for each of these shoes, the ride is a little bit of a firmer ride. So if you're looking for something that's super plush, very squishy, max cushion, these aren't exactly gonna be the shoes for you. Light Strike Foam is a very light, but also a very firm foam. I'd say the same thing for the Flow Midsole in the Under Armour Flow Velocity Wind. Part of that is because it has to be durable enough and tough enough to handle being run directly on. 
but I think that's also just part of the overall ride and the running sensation that they're looking for in this shoe. Now, in each of these shoes, it's not to say that they're hard shoes or that they're uncomfortable shoes. I'd say both of these shoes have an ample amount of cushion to them, but it's just not gonna give you that squish as you're landing with each of the footsteps. For me, I tend to land a little bit more on the forefoot and on each of these shoes, I feel like there still is plenty of cushion for me to land on my forefoot for most of my foot strikes and still feel like I'm getting enough protection from the road over the course of my run. The other thing that I say is similar between both of these shoes is they tend to like to go a little bit quicker. So when I'm out there on a pure easy run, I find in each of these shoes that their shoes are not as interesting and maybe are not kind of flowing quite as naturally as the way that the shoes geometries kind of dictate that I should be running in them. Once I pick up the pace just a little bit from kind of my normal easy level, that's when the shoes start to get a little bit more interesting for me. And I feel like I'm starting to get into the sweet spot of the foam in terms of the way that these shoes are set up. So I'd say for me, as someone who trains mainly for half marathons and marathons, I feel like the shoes tend to kind of push me a little bit faster than I want to go for most of my daily running. But I think for someone that's training for shorter races, your definition of easy might be a little bit quicker than my definition of easy. That's probably the primary runner that they're targeting with each of these shoes. Maybe not necessarily the marathoner, but someone who's running maybe half marathons, 10Ks, 5Ks, or even shorter, for example, during a high school outdoor season. And in addition to, to enjoying being a little bit faster on just your easy days, I think both of these shoes do a really fantastic job of working very fast. So today and yesterday for each of these runs, I did have a set of strides in there. So me working at kind of short bursts, but at mile effort, I felt like both of these shoes just did an absolutely fantastic job of gliding really quickly and very gently through the, the gait cycle, even though I'm working really hard. It was actually quite a surprise at how good these shoes felt at an effort which for me is some of the kind of faster running that I ever tend to do. When I was doing strides in the SL20, I was I felt like I was primarily just like using only like this little part of the shoe. And I just felt like I was like dancing across the pavement in it and it just felt so effortless to get up to speed. And I thought, surely this is gonna be the better of the two when it comes to working at my harder paces or paces that I would normally only see like, for example, on a track day. But then today when I ran in the Under Armour Flow Velocity Wind, I also felt like I could pretty much just get right up on the way ends of my toes in these shoes and dance along the pavement in these as well. And I'm actually thinking that the Flow Velocity Wind did a slightly better job at very fast paces, which was a surprise to me because I really thought the SL20 was gonna be the one that I preferred for efforts that you might see when you're doing strides or if you're doing a track day. And I do think that both of these shoes are certainly suitable to bring on the track. The uppers for both of these shoes are very comfortable as well. I think with the SL20, you're getting just a really understated quality fit. And also with the Under Armour, I think they're doing a fantastic job, even though it is a little bit puffier than I tend to like to see in my shoes, of making a shoe that just is very comfortable and just fits really well. I do think that the fit on the Flow Velocity Wind is just a little bit better. There's just a little bit more forgiving of a nature in the toe box up here without making it feel like it's a big shoe or it's an unnecessarily roomy shoe. I feel like it fits my foot just a little bit better than the SL20. With the SL20, while I did really enjoy the overall fit of this shoe, and I think it's better than most of the daily trainers that are out there. I did start to feel like right here on the edge of the toes, it maybe was bothering me just a little bit. And I was hoping for maybe a little bit of extra room up front just to give myself just a little bit more comfort. Now, as far as the outsoles go, again, like the battle yesterday, in today's battle, we have two very different approaches to traction. We got ample rubber coverage in the SL20 version two with that continental rubber. I'm really loving the pattern that's on this. It looks really aggressive, but it's still not a ton of rubber that's on here. So I feel like they're doing a good job of striking a balance of traction and weight. On the other hand, with the Under Armour Flow 
midsole that we have here. You're running directly right onto that outsole material without needing any rubber at all. And I don't feel like there's a tremendous trade-off in terms of traction that I felt, at least on the road and sometimes wet road surfaces that I ran on. I think that the only time that I would really feel a giant difference between these two shoes, because I had them both on grass and on some dirt surfaces, I think the area that I would find them very different is if I was on some rolling grassy hills. If it ever got wet, that's when I feel like these uh, rubberized EVA type midsoles, or the midsoles without any rubber coverage on them, that's when they really kind of start to suffer. All you cross country runners that are out there that are training in that kind of undulating terrain, the terrain that might get a little bit wet or stay wet a little bit longer, that's where I think you're gonna be wanting to reach for something with a little bit of rubber on the outsole like we see in the SL20 version two. So I've said some pretty flattering things about both of these shoes. I like both of them very much. I think we need to also talk about pricing before I pick a champion for today. Right now, the SL20 version two, at least this color on the Adidas website, can be found for $67. It started out at a hundred bucks. And then there's two colors. Then at some point, the original retail price on the Adidas website went to $95 for this black version. And there's a yellow version that's now selling for I think 110. So I'm not really sure what's going on with that. But the $95 version is on sale for $67. It's an amazing bargain. On the other end of the pricing spectrum, the Under Armour Flow Velocity Wind is coming in at, and it's just a recently announced shoe, so it's still very new, it's not on sale yet. Right now it's at its full retail price of $160, so almost $100 more for this shoe. So what I think Adidas is trying to do with the SL20 is to use it as a way of enticing or introducing people to the Adidas running brand. Maybe this is your first running shoe, or maybe you haven't looked at Adidas in a long time and you're looking for a way to kind of reacquaint yourself. The SL20 is a really low pressure option at trying that, especially if you're not that interested in Boost and wanna try something else that Adidas might have to offer. On the other end, I think what Under Armour is trying to do is signal that Under Armour is not the same Under Armour running company that we've known for the past several years, where a lot of people have been kind of overlooking it and not really paying much attention to it. So they're really trying to grab our attention with this shoe, new foam, new shoe, and premium pricing to kind of go along with that to indicate that this is a serious running shoe worth consideration. So two very different approaches, perhaps for two very different needs from each of these companies, but ultimately with the same goal of trying to attract either new runners or trying to bring back runners who maybe haven't looked at them for a while. So which of these two shoes do I think is better? I think the better shoe is the Under Armour Flow Velocity Wind. I like it better at easy paces. I like it better at fast paces. And I do think that it just overall fits just a little bit better. It's a little bit more comfortable. It's a little bit more capable. It's a little bit more powerful. I think it's the better shoe. But I think at the back of it all, you still have to keep in mind that at full retail, it's about 50% more expensive than an SL20 at full retail. And the SL20 is a shoe that just keeps going on sale. It keeps getting discounted. So you can buy multiple SL20s for the price of an Under Armour Flow Velocity Win. And I think at a price per dollars comparison, the SL20 definitely wins, but this isn't a channel that's purely about price. It's about which shoe is better sometimes. And today, that's the Under Armour. So those are my thoughts on the SL20 version two versus the Under Armour Flow Velocity Wind. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions or better yet, feel free to stop by the live stream that I do just about every day on YouTube, 3 p.m. Central. I love to be able to chat and interact with you guys live then. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?